But first, is this now what Australia Day looks like? Despite poll after poll telling us that every Australians want their National Day left alone. Protests tomorrow, not dissimilar to the Black Lives Matter marches we saw last year at the height of the COVID outbreak back in May and June, when restrictions that apply to others in the community well, didn't seem to apply to left-wing activists. Well, they're going ahead. This afternoon, indeed, it's been reported in the Herald Sun newspaper that the activist group behind last year's US imported movement, Black Lives Matter, will again take to the streets for their Invasion Day rally, they're calling it. Now, this mob are called the Warriors of the Aboriginal Resistance. And despite political leaders urging them not to protest in this time of pandemic, this year, like last year, they're going ahead regardless. One rule for us and one rule again, it seems, for the activist. But even then, it depends on what you're protesting about, doesn't it? I mean, if you're a pregnant woman in country Victoria, you can be handcuffed in your own home on the back of a Facebook post. But if you want to argue, and I quote, F Australia, I hope it burns to the ground during a rally on Australia Day, as one Indigenous activist, Tani Onis Williams, did a few years back. Well, somehow, that's seen as enlightened, as progressive. Well, it's not. What's happening now is the left's ongoing push to disable, disown and debase our national symbols and institutions. Australia Day is just the latest target of a movement that's relentlessly trying to make Australians ashamed of who they are and their contributions over many, many years to the country that so many of us, regardless of their hate, are proud to call our home. Trying to rewrite history is not a sign of modernity. Trying to wash away the past is Orwellian. It isn't a message of advancement. Indeed, it's a lie to pretend it's anything akin to unifying. Acknowledging where we have come from, where we are, and where we are headed, the good, the bad, the inspirational and the difficult, is what symbolises a mature nation. And as Australians, we do that and more. And just like human beings that make up the living embodiment of it, no nation on earth has come into existence without moments in its history with, you know, a modern viewpoint, our modern sensibilities, positions in the past that might have caused hurt and consternation, to say the very least. But judging the past through the prism of modern times is revisionist and it's wrong. When I was growing up, Australia Day was not as prominent as it is now, but over time, we have evolved it to be a day where we incorporate Indigenous history and our European settlement and to the subsequent waves of migration that have all come together to build this nation, which is, let's remind all the haters, a nation that's still the envy of the world. Now, tomorrow, Australia Day, should never be allowed to become a day where the activist sets one group of Australians against another based on the depth of the genealogical link. I mean, what does that say to the Vietnamese migrant who came in the 70s, that she's what, less Australian than the Greek family who came just after the war, or the Chinese arrivals from the gold rush days of the 1800s? Since when do we measure our worth as Australians based on our contribution in years rather than what we do for our nation's good, be it over one year or many? For the vast majority of Australians, tomorrow is a day where so many of us stop and we give thanks for winning the lottery of life. And that lottery is to grow up and raise our families in this sunburnt country. And while that doesn't mean hiding from our past, it certainly doesn't mean trying to wipe it away either. Can you imagine the United States rewriting the 4th of July because of the consequences of European settlement and the War of Independence, all of that, on Native American peoples? But here we are again where the activist anger of some and the striking of opposed by others is pushed again and again in an attempt to overwhelm the majority of Australians who want to cherish tomorrow's place in our national calendar and to maturely acknowledge the breadth of our history and our own place in it. I mean, it's a statement of the bleeding obvious that no one alive today was involved in any way with the events around the arrival of the First Fleet or the decades that followed. 
For most Australians alive today, we have been part of a country that has grown more and more inclusive, not less, more and more inclusive, in particular in relation to the just over 3% of our population that identify as Aboriginal. More inclusive, not less. And we willingly pay, don't we, $30 billion a year in taxes to do our best to address issues of Indigenous disadvantage. In the old Fairfax newspapers today, there was a poll. Only 28% of Australians were in favour of changing the date of Australia Day. But 49%, almost half, thought the date was likely to change within the next decade anyway. Which is, of course, the modus operandi of the left, abusing, bullying, sneering at people in order to wear them down to accept what they don't want to accept by pitching it as inevitable. Well, it's not inevitable. And if the reaction I've seen in recent days says anything, our country's quiet Australians are once again making their voices heard. But I think for a second that if Australia Day was ever changed from the anniversary of the arrival of the First Fleet, for instance, to the anniversary, let's say, of the proclamation of the Commonwealth of Australia, the left haters would just pack up and go home. No, because it's not merely the symbols they want to change, but the substance. They don't want an Australia where everyone's equal, the sort of country we pretty much have. As George Orwell knew it, socialists want a country where some are more equal than others, where we feel less positive about ourselves and our nation, where we're more dependent on the state, with less freedoms, not more. Every time the left attacks Australia's record, it's the job of senior people on the centre-right to correct the lies and the misinformation and to stand up for our country. And the many generations who have come before us, overwhelmingly good and decent people who have made this country what it is today. When it comes to promoting Australia, well, there's no better salesman than the Prime Minister, who I have to say needs to fight a little bit harder on the culture front. I mean, if things are like this with the Liberal government in power, you only have to imagine, don't you, what it would be like under Prime Minister Albanese or Plebisek. But not perhaps under a Prime Minister, Joel Fitzgibbon. Oh, I think it is divisive, Pete. I think it's disappointing and I think it's, it's wrong. Australia Day is a day when we celebrate our nationhood, uh, what we've achieved despite our isolation uh, and our uh, problematic uh, beginnings. Uh, and it has to be a unifying day, a day when we come together, recognise the mistakes and recommit ourselves to fixing the legacies which have been left by those mistakes. But, but moreover, a day when we celebrate the enormous achievements we've made and we want to do it all together. And comments from the ABC like that don't help. So as far as that, I'm concerned, like you and like Joel Fitzgibbon, January 26th, the day the modern world came to this very ancient people and ancient land, will always be our national day. It's a statement of fact, of fact, that we must never let the left tear away.